He had Mark in the legend. I just said that. I was just going to say that. Not in studio. Not in That's studio. Different. Okay. Could you take him right now, Ted? Could yeah. you? We about right to, now? We about at the same level. You about at the same level? Yeah. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How y'all doing today? Could you beat Bull in a race? Oh, stop. All right. <laughs> if you gave him a 20 yard dash. No, you got it. have to stop. 40, 40 stop. yard dash. No. I have to go 10. You have to go 40. Who wins? Me. <laughs> I love it. I think I we it. proved that I could do it. <laughs> Scientifically. What, what's your 40 right now? Me? Uh, probably about a four, five, flat. Still. Wow. Can I do a 4-4? Four, four? Can I do 10 yards in 4-4? Four, four? Well, we did time you running 10 yards. We did an overtime segment. Ten, did I do did, it in 4-4? Four, he did four? 10 yards in 3.9 seconds. 3.9. Ooh. That's a 14 second. <laughs> I don't look 10. it. Now, now, now we, we, we did yeah. have Anthony Gonzalez on, right? And I'm going to see if you can confirm this. Anthony Gonzalez said he came in. He, he came off Capitol Hill, came down to talk to us. He said, look, if Ted does not get hurt against That's Florida, right. We talked about this. They was dead in the water. He said they had a whole game plan where they was going to spot shadow you everywhere. And you got hurt with the, the foot injury. They tackled you. I'm still mad about that. I yeah. lost a lot of money, Ted. Yeah. yeah. Start, lost a lot of bread on start, the well, you know, 7-Eleven, that, that's what we call each other, 7-Eleven. You know, we always open. You know, uh, but that game, um, they was going to let me free. You know, uh, Troy had won the Heisman. You know, uh, we had beat Michigan. You know, we had everything lined up to, to give me the Teddy Ginn show. Uh, and that was going to be exciting. I had, I was playing quarterback. I was throwing balls around. I was, I was they were going to let me go, let me be the number one pick that I was for them. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of high school and. You know, I, I tried to show you guys by opening up the kickoff, and, you know, we had fun doing that. Did they make Roy Hall walk home from the stadium to Ohio after that? No, they didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's who tackled you in the end zone yeah. and got you hurt. Yeah, but, oh. uh, you know, uh, if you look back, Rory, Rory was the first person to, to all the uh, celebrations. So yeah. <laughs> Florida know, couldn't tackle him, but Roy Hall didn't hurt <laughs> his yeah. ankle. Yeah. Do you miss being in the locker room? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's the biggest thing about being in any sport, but playing football, yeah. being around 110 people or 85 people in the NFL, you know, uh, yeah. what, 75 people in high school, 30 on a, on a, on a little league team, you know, uh, you know, me coaching little league now, I was talking to my kids and I was like, I've been in a huddle from six years old mm. to 38, you know, almost 29, almost 30 years okay. of, you know, depending on another guy, you know what I'm saying? Right. So this is like my life, at, you know, this was my life. So, uh, you know, just be having the conversations and, you know, uh, being the OG, being the baby, you know, uh, changing from a rookie to the oldest guy in the room in one year, you know, it's just a lot of different things that come in and come into being in that locker room. The program your dad has built at Glenville is unbelievable. And yeah. the pipeline of talent that you guys were sending to Columbus for those years, you, Troy, Dante. Jamari O'Neal. Jam like, it was incredible. How did, how was he able to corral that much talent at Glenville? Well, you know, uh, it just started our inner city. We got to big up our, our, our area that we're from. You know, there's a lot of diamonds in the rough. Um, there's a lot of guys that's there that, you know, need the opportunity but never gets it, you know. And, um, my father figured out the game plan when we, was, when we was coming up, you know, taking us in the vans and going around to all the big colleges and only staying for an hour or two and getting out of there. And, that night we'll be somewhere else. We stay for an hour or two and we out of there the next night we somewhere else, you know, and that became a culture for us, you know, and, you know, once I was the little guy in that situation to the Pierre Woods and mm -hmm. the Cedric Bakers and Frank Needies and the Chris Chain, Chris Charleston and different things like that. So um, to watch them guys go do what they did, you know, it just made me just want to eat it up you know I met all the guys that you see as the big time coaches now I met them at 13 14 almost 12 years old you know Nick Saban Urban Meyer Jim Trestle I mean and ain't nobody that you can really name that didn't come through our door or, or sit at my house 
in the basement, you know what I'm saying? When they was at Bowling Greens and Kent State and Youngstown and different things like that. I watched people eat my mama food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like for real. For real. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And not knowing that we all was going to be the people that we are today, you know, we just, we just didn't know that. You talked about coaching Little League football now, giving back. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about your decision to do that. Well, you know, uh, my program been running. It's called Getting Elite Sports. I do football, basketball, track, and cheerleading. Um, you know, off the field things that we, we deal with too, with the mental health and different yeah. things like that. Uh, but my program been running uh, basketball. My godson is 20, about to be 22 this year. Mm-hmm. So we started with him when he was uh, in the fourth grade. Um, so that was basketball. So I'm a little bit over about 14 years with that. Uh, my, my football program is going on seven years. Uh, my first group of kids that I have right now are sophomores for my dad. You know, they okay. played in the, I have yeah. five sophomores that played for my father this year as starters. You know, so uh, my, my program is, it was, a, was a big shock for me this year because I watched it from the far for so long. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. the last two years, I've really been hands-on with it since I've really been home. And to see them guys go out and do what they do, you know, um, just show that I'm in the right realm of my program, that I'm telling the kid that if you listen to what I'm saying to you from 7 to 14, by the time it's time to really put it on and you go out there and you really have to, you know, start the life that you start for yourself, you know, you don't have to wait till you're a junior or a senior. You can walk in as a freshman or, or a sophomore and really get it done. Now, so. you, you, I think you started, you, um, you know, I would say Rubisky, Hartline, Gonzalez, y'all, and Roy Hall, I, I, Roy Hall, you should have been cold. He big, he was big, he fast, he had a single digit. I thought Roy Hall was going to be that dude when he was at O State. But needless to say, y'all kind of started that. That receiver thing, I didn't ever, I didn't think Trestle o was gonna open it up for you because he started moving you around, putting you in different positions in the backfield, kind of like little. It was almost like, wow, this is kind of a precursor of what they do now a little bit now with their athletes. But I never foresaw Ohio State becoming a receiver school. You look at the guys, Jackson Smith, Alave, Chris Gary, or uh, Garrett, uh, Garrett Wilson, and. Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, do you feel like y'all was on the forefront of that, especially um, back then when you know football was you you wasn't throwing the the football around. It was a two receiver type deal. Uh, I think that came in um, Tress doing seeing seeing that over the years he started bringing in more and more people from the hard lines and um, the people that came in after me. You know, Uh, but it was just moving that that type of way from from Jenkins. If you start seeing from Mike Jenkins how, you know, we were starting to open up the playbook, but Mike Jenkins didn't have another threat with him, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So as we came in, you know, I was supposed to be playing corner anyway, so that's what we forget, you that's know. A, I, don't, I always understood because I went to McKinley. Yeah. And um, they always talked about you running hurdles, and, and, and my brother played against y'all, and y'all, y'all, y'all tore their mouth out. They, yeah. It was bad. But here's the thing, like, they was like, you were supposed to be playing corner. And I'm like, how did that transition happen? Like, you just in camp, and all of a sudden you catch your passes. Well, you know, I came in as the number one corner, but I was still a top guy on offense. You know what I'm saying? So when I got there, you had Dustin Fox and you Bode and Dante Whitner and Nate Siley and Tyler Everett. And you had guys that, uh, Chi-Chi, like you had guys that was really like put their dudes in that sat behind the Dawsons and, yeah. and the people like that, that, you know, it was a wait your turn type situation. Mm-hmm. And uh, with me, it was just a little different because of the statue of I came in as. I was the number one player in the country. Only person that was better than me was Adrian Peterson. Now you get what I'm saying? So it was like, how could we just redshirt this guy or not play him on the field? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I was little, I was 165, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, watching what they did with Gamble, you know what I'm saying, for those three or four years that Gamble was there, you know, and how the defense really, I mean, how the offense really sent everything his way on defense to get him tired for offense, you know what I'm saying? So they already had a game plan on how they really wanted to do it. Trash already had a map, you get what I'm saying? And then with my size not being capable to go out and have to be a front runner of a, of a tackle, 
of pulling. Now I'm first at the at the at the point. You know what I'm saying? I'm too little for that. Now they got the edge. Now they got different things that I just was just wasn't ready for. You get what I'm saying? So um, they knew that I was good with the ball in my hand. So they gave me what ten plays, and it was I ran nothing but slants, goals, and slant and screens for the first three weeks of my freshman season. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when I came in. Uh, NC State, and they started me, and Justice Jawick threw a slant, but he didn't. He looked my way on the slant, but didn't throw it. And you know, back in the day, they could just come right downhill there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I came to the sideline. I said, "Trust, you're gonna have to take me out." So I learned. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned the whole playbook because I'm just running, running one or two things, and yeah. they they own it. Yeah. That's the first time I really realized, like, oh, I got to do something different. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm just coming in and this this guy just sitting there looking dead at me like, you better not run this slant. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran it. <laughs> but uh, Mikey McNuggets, go ahead. Yeah, and if you like these stories from Ted, just a reminder, Ted will be the Buckeyes postgame analyst for their games when it's on WKYC. So be seeing a lot of Ted Ginn Jr. breaking down the Buckeyes. Uh, Ted, appreciate you coming on. I do have a question, though. When I think of you throughout your career, you were the ultimate playmaker. It didn't matter if you were returning a kick catching a pass, a handoff reverse, you found a way to get to the end zone. In your opinion, and you can't put yourself on this list, who's on the Mount Rushmore of the best NFL playmakers of all time? Ooh. Well, you can't. You, you, Tough one. Well, the, the ultimate guy you can't never forget about is Deion Sanders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Are you enjoying uh, watching him in Colorado, by the way? Before yes, you? yes. Oh, I mean, it's awesome, isn't it? He, he's, he's showing a, a, a blueprint of – Basically, uh, what I seen, uh, what my dad did for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's just walking his kids through life, and you don't have nobody else better to do it but your dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just it's just a whole different scenario of things that goes with that Colorado stuff. You know what I'm saying? With yeah. Dion, that yeah. is just a great deal that's going on. Whoever don't like that is don't don't like is a bad person. Yeah. You know so what I'm you, saying? So you got Dion on the list. Dion, yeah. I can't forget my dude Charles Wilson. You oh, know, good one, man. Yeah. Even though he's, you know, yeah, he is. Yeah, uh, but he's legit. Um, Ohio guy, for sure. Yeah, uh, he has a single digit. And yeah. if you got a single digit and advisor, you good. You, you, <laughs> he, you know he, what it is. He's a deuce. Yeah, you know, yeah. deuce is why yeah. I wore, it's one of the reasons why I wore two my yeah. whole life. Uh, ah. Uh, and I, I'll be Reggie Bush. That's a good one. Yeah, that's yeah. a great pick. That's a good one. Yeah. Reggie Bush. Yeah. That's a good um, list so far. Um, you said, is it four or five? Four. Four. One more. Four. One, more. one more. That's a good list. I put him on the spot, too. Yeah. I didn't I mean, give him any more. That's, that's a bad job out of me, Ted. I apologize. Oh, well, you might and be. the X Factor. Deontay Hall. Oh, yeah. Mm. Man. That's a great list. That's a great list. Were you, did you know you were the fastest guy on the field at all times? Yes, because I was the smallest guy on the field at all times. So I, I had to play with that. Like, I had to deal with both of that. Like, you know, I can't take a hit because they might knock me out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got to run as fast as I can. Yeah. So I don't take this hit. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it just, it, it kind of grew with me after, uh, Pierre Woods hit me and practiced my ninth grade year, you know, because we used to steal Pierre Woods. Uh, me and my friend, one of my best friends, Calvin Stearns, we used to steal his lunch every, we knew his lunch period as freshmen. Yeah. So Pierre Woods had his own lunch period where the ladies gave him three or four trays. <laughs> He'd get 12 cookies, <laughs> uh, four milks, you know, uh, two juices, like, well, yo. <laughs> He he grubbing all yeah. by himself. <laughs> so me and my friend used to our lunchroom had two doors and we were coming to two doors and he'd be sitting there like, not today, little Ted. <laughs> not today, little C. Like that both our names was little. Yeah. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? And we used to, you know, it's like a cat and mouse game, like, you go that way, I go that way. And he man gone, like, you know what I'm saying? So he couldn't never get me. 
he could never yeah. get me. You know what I'm saying? Either you're going to leave your food yeah. and we still go get it, yeah. or you're going to stare with your food and we're going to take what we want. Like, yeah. we're like little bullies. That's like, so funny. That's and crazy. my father was one day we was in practice and I was doing pretty good. I was playing quarterback. You know, I was playing scout team and we was dialing it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Pierre kept saying, well, I can't hit him. That's the reason why he's getting the ball off. <laughs> so he go live on me. And when he came around that corner, mm. I said, nobody in the world will never hit me again like that. <laughs> oh, man. man. I, I was watching some highlights. He other is a day. good trash talker, too, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Michigan, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Big side. I was watching some highlights, and yeah. I was just like, it's, it's cheating because you would just be running straight. And I'm like, oh, listen, he got this little stealth mode where his like his head get down like this and he start running straight. I'm like, they're never catching him. The way you did Michigan State was so dirty. Yeah. But like because you just you just running around. You did Oklahoma State kind of dirty too. Like mm. they was letting you get too Oklahoma much money. State needed that they deserved that. <laughs> they kept talking about they was the real OSU. And then number thirty, no, number forty four was like their middle linebacker. And you know, like when you go to the ball games, you got to do everything. It's like two sided. You sure, know what I'm saying? Sure. Y'all two versus us two. And we gonna go yeah. to everything together. Yep. Yep. And he just kept saying, he so country. Ted again. Ted again. I'ma get him. I'ma get him. And he, it's like he kept like everything we did, he yeah. just popped out on me. I'ma yeah. I'm hit you hard. He got me one good time. Yeah. But he had just fired me up and then we had lost Troy that, that week. Mm -hmm. So we didn't we didn't have no just as a week throw, uh, put his hamstring on the fourth yeah. play, throwing a hitch. Like, so we, I was the third quarterback. So it was like, we didn't, we were so like in disarray, but when nobody didn't even know it, you know what I'm saying? Wow. That's, that just show yeah. you how good that we was about to be. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. off of that, that game right there showed you that you got some kids in this, in this university. Yeah. That if you don't let the, you don't let them go, we wouldn't have never been who we was. Mm. Ted, I'm curious. Um, in in the last few years, the Browns drafted Anthony Schwartz in the third round, a guy with great speed, but like he, it seems like he can't play football. I don't know. And the, you remember a few years before that, the Bengals drafted John Ross, like ninth overall, another guy, big time speed, but couldn't really do anything, and he flopped. Do you think, as a guy with great speed but great football skill, more than they had, I, you know, like could you have helped them? Well, 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 it's all about the game. You know what I'm saying? So when, you, when you're a speedster like me and, 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 and you're not running by people like Tyreek Hill, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Then they don't know what to do with you. Right, right. You get what I'm saying? Because now I could go get a, 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 a guy that's not that fast but got great route running and I can play him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. he's not going to never give you that that actual big play, explosive play, but once every four games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, so and what, what I had to realize was I was so fast that I was faster than the play. Mm. And I'm just okay. being real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was bad to see me so wide open. You get what I'm saying? Really? That they'll put you over here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That... Oh, the quarterback just can't get it there. Uh, okay. To, wow. To Bull's point, though, I think you touched on something fascinating. For track guys and shorts, can you teach a fast guy how to catch? Right. Because right. the NFL is intoxicated with speed. Yeah. And, and they're drafting these track the guys, ball. but they can't catch the ball. Yeah. Well, because what, 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 I, I went through this. I went through uh, the drops. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I'm known as the, the drops, but I never, lead the, I never led the league in drops. So I don't, I don't get it. You get what I'm saying? Now, we, I drop big time plays in big moments that gave people the, 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 the deal that oh he dropped balls. Mm -hmm. You know the what stigma. I'm saying? The stigma. Like yeah. you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what I think really happens is we just we be so fast that we get there, and sometimes we do this and that thing stay right there. We just don't never look it in. Like like most people do, that's big. That oh, I know this hit coming. I know like we, it's just a different type of genre that go on with six four and mm -hmm. five nine five ten fast guys. Like we just do this so fast. Like I got pictures where I'm like this, 
but I catch it. Mm-hmm. Then I got pictures where I'm like this, <laughs> and, and I drop it. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not really an art. It's somewhere down in line, you're going to take heed in yourself. Like, I don't want to be that person. It took me seven years to do that in the living. Yeah. Hmm. Right. I didn't. I didn't get an opportunity to really showcase my talent as a receiver. Yeah. Till I got to the Carolina Panthers that first year. Right. Yeah. 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 You get sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was because Ricky Pro, that was a receiver, right? Fast guy, kinda. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Told me like, hey, dude, you can help us here. You're not just a punt returner or kickoff returner. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I had a guy like Steve Smith, that was like, man, I'm gonna need you. So once you start seeing guys that really walk up and you take the outside people out of your life and you worry about the people that sit in the seats with you, then you, you'll go to work. Yeah. But if the people in the seats sitting with you don't believe in you either, then you kind of like on a lonely pedestal to find a new home. Hmm. Uh, really quick, I, I yeah. want to ask you about this. You played for such a long time. Um, you know, I got guys like, like Mike Doss. I grew up with him, played ball with him in high school. And I asked him for the first time, I said, yo, how crazy it was it when people started being like, hey, you got drafted in the second round and everybody in the hood knew how much you made. Yeah. Like, what, like did you get some crazy? He said, bro, I, can, I can't even tell you how many calls I got from people I like, have never heard of or haven't seen four or five times. How did, you, how did you grow from the time when you started and you got your first big deal? Um, I think you were top 10 pick for the, for the, uh, for the Dolphins to where you, how you grew and learned how to manage your money and make sure that you were straight um, at the end of your career? Well, you had, to, you had to have a no man. That was my dad. So you said he shoot them right through, through Pops? Go to Pops. Oh, and then uh-huh. now, you go, now you go pick and choose if you want to go talk to Pops or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. great. You get what I'm saying? That's crazy. So um, that, that, that was a deal. And then just doing the right things for, for the right people at the right time. You know what I'm saying? The community, the, the, the kids, you know, taking care of the, the right situations is the way that you, you go about that. And then you just can't ever stop being who you are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people get money and they stop being who they are towards their family and their friends. And that was my biggest pet peeve. My family and friends got me to where I was at. So I'd have, I'd have never played 14 years without my support system. And my support system was my wife, my parents, my kids, and this community. I mean, just, yeah. just being real, like I was a real open the door. I was the real pull the knob. I was the real like uh, real example of what this really supposed to be. So I couldn't I couldn't mess it up in no shape or form, and it's still like that to this day. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to be the door to show people what to do when it's when you ain't playing ball. You get what I'm saying? Because that's what our kids know. We the gans around here, so. It's like I've always been the door and I'm always going to be the door. So I just try to make sure that I do everything the right way that I'm supposed to do. Mike, before you wrap things up, let me just share. This is how big a dork I am. Uh, I have a spreadsheet from my 2007 Fantasy Football League rookie draft. <laughs> and here you see Ted Ginn Jr. You probably can't see it. <laughs> Being, he was drafted 11th overall. In, uh, sorry. That's but, great. I mean, that's pretty good. 11th that's, overall, we had, you know, it was 48 picks. You went that picks. far off. 11th over. You and Anthony Gonzalez drafted back-to-back ahead of Dwayne Bow uh, <laughs> in the 2007 Fantasy Football League rookie draft. That's crazy. Uh, and the fact that I still have this list 16 it, years later. I don't know if that's your phone. That, that that's on my that's, phone. That's, that's and crazy he was only two both. slots off. <laughs> hey, we're going to get Ted out of here on this. Yeah. But Ted, cool. I do have one final question yeah. to wrap up here. I know you never played with Deshaun Watson, but you were in the league on the other sidelines for Deshaun for three or four years as you ended your career. What do you see from Deshaun as a quarterback and the skill set he has attached to that right shoulder of his? Well, first off, I, I like Deshaun Watson a lot. I was able to meet him before he even touched this league. You know what I'm saying? With playing with Carolina and the Cam Newton um, yeah. Uh, thing that they had going on and I just liked him ever since then and I hated that we had to play against him at Ohio State that one Mm -hmm. time you know what I'm saying but uh, one thing that I can say that I always seen in him is he's a fighter 
He's a fighter. He like to put things on his back. And sometimes it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like that last preseason game that, that he played in. I mean, he took three straight carries back to back. Mm-hmm. That's just trying to show the team, trying to show the community, trying to show the sports world that I'm going to do whatever it takes to win this game. You know what I'm saying? Or to put on for the Browns. So I just think that we have a great captain, a great leader, a great fighter that's that's really one in our wheel. And right before he left, I was at New Orleans and he came in and he destroyed us. He had on a red spat. <laughs> and once again, and the man with any color spat is and, not and to be trifled yeah, with. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, he came in, he had his red spat on, he told me. I don't even know if you remember that. He told me, he said, yeah, I'm about to give y'all a run for y'all money. And I think we might have, we might have, we might have won by three. Yeah. For like seven seconds, I catch a pass, we kill field goal, get out yeah. of there. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate you coming in, man. No doubt. Thank appreciate you for spending you, time with us. Good luck covering the Buckeyes this year. That was fun. You're all in on the Browns? Yeah, I hope I'll be back. Yeah, we will definitely have you oh, back. Yeah. We appreciate we you taking yes, the sir. time. Yes, sir. The great Ed Ginn Jr. Yeah. Awesome to see him.